Hey there everybody, it's Mark Curley. I'm back with another How to Draw video. Today I'm going to be working on an internet gag cartoon, a cartoon that is designed uh, to be uploaded and released on the uh, internet so as to give people a little bit of a laugh. Now I haven't done a whole lot of uh, gag cartoons over the years except way back when I worked uh, as a freelancer for uh, Nickelodeon magazine. I did this one uh, gag cartoon in which you see the old lady saying, you know, you can't be standing on the lawn. It says stay off the lawn. So of course he solves the problem by hanging upside down from the tree limb. Um, you know, there's a certain art to creating gag cartoons and uh, in a way what I'm doing here today is ho hopefully launching a new ongoing endeavor of mine uh, in which I attempt to uh, do such cartoons. Now I'm going to show you my uh, rough idea for the cartoon that I'm going to be working on today. And it says, uh, when someone doesn't reply to me on social media and I show myself pounding the ground uh, as this sort of brick wall face uh, is uh, disapproving of me. And then in the other one, uh, when they finally reply a couple of days later, and then I'm, I'm going to draw these sort of uh, cherub angels lifting me up above the clouds. Uh, and the whole thing is in a way, you know, making fun of myself and my own sort of and, and exaggerated uh, interpretations of what it means when someone <laughs> does or does not reply to you on the internet. So what I'm going to do is begin by getting the lettering uh, out of the way. I'll do that all in time lapse and then we'll come back and begin working on the cartoon itself, hopefully uh, doing uh, almost all of that real time. All right, so let's get into the drawing. You know, the first thing you probably noticed was that this was a perfect square, uh, in my case, six inches on all sides. And that's sort of, you know, trying to make it fit into the, the Instagram format, let's just say, and make it easy for someone to see the joke all at once uh, in a single panel. Of course, a lot of people will do multi-panel uh, cartoons, and maybe I can do, you know, a video about that kind of thing at a later date. But I'm going to begin... Uh, putting in the loose guidelines. Now, one thing that I would certainly advise uh, to anyone trying to do a cartoon is to do some sort of rough version to begin with, sort of figure out your layout and where everything is going to be. Um, sometimes beginning artists will try to just go right into the um, finished product right from the start and uh, I think, boy, unless you have, you know, <laughs> uh, flawless uh, instincts, uh, it's really hard to get it right on the first try. I would say do some sort of a, um, you know, thumbnail sketch or something to help figure it out. Now, I, I thought I would say a little bit about my, the idea behind this, you know. Uh, I think that it, sometimes a cartoonist is sort of observing their own behavior, their, uh, some aspect, you know, they're almost delving into their own psychology a little bit. And I noticed that I had this tendency to get overly bummed out if someone uh, didn't reply to me, which is ironic because, of course, many of you probably watching this are like, well, you don't reply to your comments, man. Where do you get off? And uh, believe me, I'm keenly aware uh, of that, that uh, certainly on YouTube, I have been, in recent years, I have been terrible about not replying to comments. I just reached some point where I was just like, I got to make some choices here. Where where am I going to reply to comments? And I do, uh, as I've said in previous uh, videos, I'm probably best at replying to Twitter, comments that I get on Twitter. I like, well, the thing I like about Twitter, in terms of you can reply to a comment in such a way that it goes out to all the people who are following you. And to me, I like that because I'm like, okay, you know, this person has asked a really good question. I can answer them and I can also answer that question for everyone else who's following me. It just seems like a really great way of doing it instead of having to try to answer one at a time all these different people who are asking you. Anyway, that's kind of my thinking there. But I, I am hoping to get be better about replying to comments on YouTube. Um, especially in the months ahead, I am uh, I have finally reached this stage where I am uh, done with this graphic novel project. Or I had like maybe three graphic novel projects back to back that were really taking up a lot of my time and uh, thankfully I got a little bit of spare time I'm trying to maybe reinvent the way that I approach 
um, my audience on the internet, and this cartoon here is going to probably be um, part of it. So you see me having, you know, I, I had the original pose worked out roughly in my uh, sketch, and part of the humor to me is to, in, in a cartoon like this, is to really exaggerate it. Uh, so that this guy seems, this guy, me, seems like it's the end of the world almost, pounding against the ground in frustration. They didn't reply to me, whatever will I do, you know? And I think, um, you know, and when it comes to cartooning, it helps if it's personal to you, uh, if you're not thinking, well, what's funny to other people, you know? Uh, I think the, whoops, sorry about that, knocking things out of the way, that's funny to other people. <laughs> uh, if you are trying to imagine what will be funny uh, to other people that isn't actually funny to yourself, I think you're in trouble as a cartoonist. It really should be uh, personal as much as it can be. And the, this whole thing, again, uh, derived from my observations about myself. Uh, the sort of ridiculousness of my own um, way of over-interpreting, over-interpreting, over-interpreting what it means when someone doesn't reply to you on social media. And, and that I almost began to think that it was this, you know, the rejection of the gods almost. And that's kind of what my concept is here with this. I'm going to be drawing this giant... A uh, brick wall face, you know, that maybe looks a little bit like some sort of ancient god disapproving uh, <laughs> reply god who is uh, not shining upon you. And that's, of course, how this second thing sort of pairs off with the, the angels, and there's this kind of ridiculous um, theme going on in this cartoon of the, 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 you know, person, uh, i.e. me, um, taking the whole thing of social media too seriously. And, and I, my hope is that I'm not the only one and that people seeing this cartoon will be like, yeah, yeah, I know that feeling. I've been there. I've, I've had that sort of tendency to, to get carried away with the, the importance that I attach to a reply or a lack of reply. Um, but as I said, I'm hoping to... You know, I don't know if I'm going to be able to become a real internet cartoonist, but I, I did think it would be nice to try something new in these months ahead uh, and find a new outlet for my creative ideas. You know, lately all of my uh, creativity has been going mainly into these books and then also into the YouTube videos and just a little bit into like a, the occasional humorous tweet or something that I'll put on one of my internet stories or something like that. And I just felt like, you know, I started to see people who do cartoons on uh, Instagram, different places like that. I was like, boy, that looks like fun. That looks like a great outlet for your creativity. And, uh, and of course, I noticed that um, it, so these cartoons resonate with people, you know. Uh, and you'll see in the com comments sometimes to the cartoon, sort of like, yes, yes, I know exactly how that feels, or, you know, I feel almost like you're writing about me and that kind of thing. And, you know, as a creative person, certainly as the type of creative person that I am, that feeling of connecting with people, of, of having tapped into something that other people understand, uh, that's a big deal to me. That's something that really is gratifying to see. Uh, so anyway, that's the sort of idea of this... Um, drawing over here. I think maybe what I will do, uh, rather than go through the second side of it with the same degree of um, real-time discussion, I think I will time-lapse through. But as I complete this uh, drawing on the right-hand side, I'm going to come back and maybe talk about some of the things that occurred to me uh, as I was working on it. So bear with me. I'm going to go ahead and do this next part in time-lapse but we will be right back in just a few seconds.
All right, so I think I've got enough of the uh, pencil work in place. I thought it might be interesting to compare, see if I made any big changes between the rough version uh, and this more finalized version. Um, I kind of regret having to squeeze these uh, legs in here. I wonder if uh, in the inking stage, maybe I could, if I were to tilt this head forward, maybe that's what I should do. Um, that, w that area won't seem quite so cramped. But yeah, as you see, the importance of doing, even after doing a rough version, uh, sometimes you find that you still have to tweak things to get them the way you want them to be in the final. Uh, in any case, um, one thing that I uh, decided as I went along is I thought, you know, you got to be aware that people are seeing this. A lot of people will be seeing this cartoon on their phones. They might not be able to enlarge it uh, casually. I mean, you want to be, you want it to be readable, even when it's super small. And that's partly why I enlarged. I think proportionally, this face is a little larger. The angels are a little larger. So I thought the clouds, you know, the clouds are part of the gag. But it's the the crucial thing is for you to be able to see these characters and understand what they are and what they're doing. So that's that's part of uh, how I tweaked that a little bit as I went from the um, thumbnail to the um, to the sort of final line work that I have here. Yeah, hopefully this will make that a slightly less awkward with the feet. In any case, it's time for me now to ink and I for sure I'm not going to be able to do all of this uh, real time, um, but you know, we can start anyway and uh, what I, again, what I would say with this, I'm using this uh, Pigma Micron 08, which is, uh, you know, long-time viewers of my videos will know that that's kind of my standard uh, inking tool. But I think in this case, I'm even going more and deliberately than usual for a bold line. Same thinking as I was saying a moment ago, that this needs to be readable from a distance. And I think, um, you know, people who have been published and so forth, who have years of experience, you become aware of, you know, at what scale is this going to be reproduced? Anytime I get any assignment, whether it's for a cartoon like this or for any uh, type of uh, work that's, you know, going to be shown to the world, I always want to be aware of how the audience is going to see it. At what size will this be repro reproduced? Um, you know, does it make sense to include a lot of details if the format is not going to allow those details to be seen? And I think, especially in the realm of cartooning, you kind of don't want too many details. You want to boil this down to the core uh, joke and have it um, understandable at, at a, almost a, you know, seconds long glance. And in a lot of ways, I would say hyper detail is maybe, can be the enemy of a joke. You know, I think a lot of times the funniest jokes are done in a really simplistic way. Um, you know, part of the power of, say, The Simpsons is that those characters are drawn in a quite cartoony way. I don't think, you know, I'd argue that some of those exact same gags just wouldn't be as funny if they were drawn in a super realistic way. But, you know, I'm always hesitant to make generalizations, but that anyway, that's my thinking as you see me inking this in a pretty simplistic way. Again, this idea of, you know, this might be the size of a postage stamp or something by the time someone sees it. Um, I want them to be able to look at it and know what it is. And that's why you see me kind of doing bolder, thicker lines than I normally would do. Now, one thing I gotta warn you about is you're not gonna see the color version of this in this video. I'm only gonna take this to a finished ink black and white, and what I'm gonna do is add color, probably by way of Photoshop, uh, at my own leisure, and then I'm going to release this in its final form uh, on Instagram, also on Twitter, and also on my uh, official Facebook and I'll put a link to all of those so that you can choose if you want to see once you've finished this video or even right now if you can't wait. <laughs> uh, there will be links in the description for you to go see how it turned out 
when I added color. Now my idea uh, is to make this one very cold, lots of blues, like sort of frozen out. And I might even use the computer to add on top of it a layer of like snow, like I've been locked out in the cold by this horrible lack of reply. Um, some of these lines that I'm using to suggest uh, a brick wall, I may again use sort of Photoshop trickery to de-emphasize these lines uh, so that we focus mainly on the the face and uh, maybe just get a hint of the idea that this is supposed to be a brick wall. Um, we'll see how it goes. And I know some people might say, well, why don't you do a video showing us how to do computer coloring? Um, and I, you know, hopefully I can do that at some point. Um, I suppose what happens with computer coloring is you almost have to do the entire thing time lapse and then do a voiceover because it is incredibly boring, I think, to watch. Um, computer coloring, it's just all so incremental and you just see a cursor floating around and that's why I, I've decided not to include that as part of this video, but watch this space. Hopefully I can figure out a way of uh, in the future doing some kind of computer coloring video that's kind of like a process video. It's all all done in time lapse, but you know, has me explaining things in a kind of a voiceover later. But anyway, hopefully some of this stuff that I've said about, you know, about the big, thick, bold lines um, will make sense to you if you are considering doing such cartoons uh, for internet consumption. Um, you know, in the old days, people used to do a lot of cross-hatching, stuff like that. I think in the age of the internet, cross-hatching um, is maybe not ideal. Uh, it kind of clutters things up and, and indeed when I look at the successful internet cartoonists very few of them are going for loads and loads of detail. They are sort of very often simplifying things indeed. You see some things that are like literally stick men. Um, but it's great. It's a great way of delivering the gag. Um, so there's nothing wrong with simplicity and anyone out there watching this if you feel like boy I'm not that good at anatomy and so forth well boy you know that's not gonna hold you back when it comes to cartooning it's so much more about your idea the joke the joke itself and whether that, that resonates with people uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and finish inking this side off all in time-lapse and then um, probably also ink the lettering and the border and all of that and then we'll be back at the end with a few final words. All right, well, there's the finished inked version of the illustration. Of course, it really does need color, uh, this picture, and the way that I've drawn it, I'm anticipating adding color to it. Um, but uh, for you to see that, you got to have to click those links in the uh, description. Those of you who already follow me on uh, social media, maybe you've already seen the finished version, but if you want to see what this looks like with the color added, go ahead and follow those links, check it out. Let me know what you think of this cartoon, and who knows, this might be the first of many uh, such cartoons that I do as I begin to use this as a new sort of creative outlet for myself. But before I go, I want to say thank you to anyone who has supported me by getting any of my books, like my latest graphic novel, My Last Summer with Cass. Very excited to hear from people who've picked this up and are enjoying it. The Mastering Manga series 1, 2, and 3. A lot of info in here about, um, you know, emotional uh, drawing faces like you saw in my uh, cartoon here today. And, of course, my very latest book is The Ultimate Book of Drawing Hands. Super, super grateful to anyone who supports me by getting any of those books. But for now, let me go ahead and lay down this pen. I want to thank you all for watching this video. I really hope you enjoyed it. And I'll be back with another one real soon.